Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of my Read Along With Me series. So for today's episode, we're going to be reading five chapters. Last episode, we read three chapters. And basically what happened in the last episode is that Melinda got in trouble in school. Um, because she was not doing because her grades are not good and her behavior is not good either and then and then she goes to detention and and then she's back to her art class and she is still struggling with her tree and Mr. Freeman um encourages her to study um about Picasso and, um, Melinda was ever, was able to, um, sketch, um, whatever it is that Mr. Freeman is looking for. And, yeah. So, and, um, I don't... I don't really, really remember much from reading all these chapters, so I'm just gonna get right into it, so let's get reading. I am a good girl. I go to every single class for a week. It feels good to know what the teachers are talking about again. My parents get the, the news flash from the guidance counselor. They aren't sure how to react. Happy because I'm behaving, or angrier because they have to be happy about such a minor thing as a kid go, as a kid as a kid who goes to every to class every day. The guidance counselor conven convinces them I need a reward, a, a a chew toy or something. They settle on clothes. I'm out. I'm outgrowing everything I own, but shopping with my mother. Shopping with my mother? Just shoot me and put me out of my misery. Anything but a shopping trip with my mom. She hates shopping with me. At the mall, she she stalks ahead, chin high, eyelids twitching because I won't because I won't try on the practic practical stylish clothes clothes she likes. Mother is mother is a rock. I am the ocean. I have to pout and roll my eyes for hours until she finally wears down and crumbles into a thousand, thousand grains of beach sand. It may, it takes a lot of energy. I don't think I'll have it in time. Apparently, Mom isn't up to the dragon, dra the dragon wine mall jig, either. When they when they announce I've earned new clothes, they they add that I have to get them at efforts so mom can use her discount. I'm supposed to take the bus after school and meet her at the store. In a way, I'm glad. Get in, buy, get out, like like ripping off a band aid. It seems like a good idea until I'm standing at the bus stop in front of us in front of school as a blizzard rips through the country. The wind chill must be 20 below a night and I don't have a hat or mittens. I try keeping my back my back to to, to the wind, but my ear but my rear end freezes. Facing it is impossible. The snow blows up under my eyelids and fill my te fills my tears. That's why I don't. That's why I don't hear the car pull pull up next to me. When the horn blows, I nearly jump out of my skin. It's Mr. Freeman. Need a ride? Mr. Freeman's ca car shocks me. It's a blue Volvo. A safe Swedish box. I had figured, I had him figured for an old VW bus. It is clean. I had visions of art supplies, posters, and routing fruit everywhere. 
when I get in classic classical music plays quietly well wanders never never sees he's he said he says dropping me off in the city is the o is only a little out of his way he loved to hear to meet my mother my eyes widen with fear maybe not he Maybe not, he says. I brush the melting, the melting snow from my head and fold my hands in front of the heating vent. He he turns the fan up full blast. As I thought, I mount the millage markers on the. I count the millage, the millage markers on the on the side of the road. Keeping an eye out for interesting roadkill. We get a lot of dead dead deer in the suburbs. Sometimes poor people take the venison for their winter's meat. But most of the time the car the carcasses rot until they their skin hangs like ribbons over their bones. We head west to the big city. You did a good job with that cubist st sketch, he says. I don't, I don't know what to say. We pass a dead dog. It doesn't have a collar. I'm seeing a lot of growth in your work. You are, you are learning more than you know. I don't know anything. My trees suck. Mr. Freeman puts on his turn signal, looks in the rearview mirror, pulls into the left lane, and passes a, a beer truck. Don't be so hard on yourself. Art is about making mistakes and learning from them. He pulls back into the right lane. I watch the deer, I watch the beer truck fade into the snowstorm in the, in the side, in the side mirror. Part of me thinks maybe he is driving a bit too far with, well, with all the snow, but the car is heavy and doesn't slip. The snow had that had caked on my socks melts into my sneakers. Alright, but you said we had to put, emo put emotion into our art. I don't know what that means. I don't know what I'm supposed to feel. My finger, my fingers fly up and cover my mouth. What was I? What am I doing? Art without emotion is like chocolate cake without sugar. It makes you gag. He he sticks his finger down his throat. The next time you work on your trees, don't think about trees. Think about love or hate or joy or rage. Whatever makes you feel something makes your palms sweat or your ter your toes curl focus on that feeling when people don't express themselves they die one piece at a time you'd be shocked at how many adults are really dead inside walking through their days through their days with no idea who they are just waiting for a heart attack or cancer or a mac truck to come along and finish the job it's the saddest thing I know. He pulls off the exit and stops at the light at the bottom of the ramp. Something small and furry and dead and crumble, crumpled by the storm sewer. I drew off a scab of my, on my thumb. The, the effort sign blinks in the middle of the, of the block. Over there, I say. You can drop me off in front. We sit for a moment. The snow hid hiding the other side of the street. A cello solo thrumming from the speakers. Um, thanks, I say. Don't mention it, he answers. If you ever need a talk, you know where to find me. I unbuckled the seatbelt and opened the door. Melinda, Mr. Freeman says. Snow filter filters into the car and melts in on the dashboard dashboard 
You are a good kid. You're a good kid. I think you have a lot to say. I'd like to hear that. I closed the door. I stop by the manager's office, and the secretary says my mother is on the phone. Just as well, it will be easier to find a pair of jeans without her around. I head for the young lady section of the store. Another reason why they, another reason they don't make any money. Who wants to be called a young lady? I need a size 10. As much as it kills me to admit that. Everything I own is innate or small. I look at my canoe feet and I look at my canoe feet and my wet, obnoxious ankle bones. Aren't girls supposed to stop growing at this age? When I was in sixth grade, my mom bought me all these books about puberty and adolescence. So I would appreciate what a beautiful and natural and miraculous transformation I was going through. Crap. That's what it is. She complains all the time about her hair turning gray and her butt sagging and her chin and her chin, chin wrinkling and her skin wrinkling. <laughs> But I'm supposed to be grateful for a face of zits, hair in embarrassing places, and feet that grow an inch, an inch at night. An inch a night. Utter crap. No matter what I try on, I know I'll hate it. Effort, efforts has c cornered the market on com completely unfashionable clothes. Clothes that grandmas buy for your birthday. It's a fashion graveyard. Just just get a pair that fits. I tell myself. One pair. That's the goal. I look around. No mom. I carry three pairs of the least ex offensive jeans into the into the dressing room. I am the only person trying anything on. The first pair is way too small. I can't even get them over over my butt. Don't bother with the second pair. They're a smaller size. The third pair is huge. Exactly what I'm looking for. I scurry out of the three-way mirror with an extra large sweatshirt over the top. You can hardly tell what, that they are efforts jeans. St still no mom. I adjust the mirror so I can see reflections of reflections, miles and miles of me in my new jeans. I hook my hair behind my ears. I should have washed it. My face is sturdy. I lean into the mirror. Eyes after eyes after eyes stare back at me. Am I in, am I in there somewhere? A thousand eyes blank. No makeup. Dark circles. I pulled the side flaps of the mirror in closer, folding myself into the folding glass, into the looking glass, and blocking out the rest of the the rest of the store. My face becomes a Picasso sketch. My body slicing into dissecting cubes. I saw a movie once where a woman was burned over eighty percent of her body. And they had to wash all the dead skin off. They wrapped her in bandages, kept her drugged, and waited waited for skin crafts, skin grafts. They actually sew, sewed her into a new skin. I put, I push, I push my ragged mouth against the mirror. A thousand bleeding, crusted lips push back. What does it feel like to walk in a new skin? Was she completely sensitive like a baby or numb? Without nerve, nerve endings, just walking in a skin bag? I exhale and my mouth disappears in a fog. I feel, I feel like my skin has been turned off. I stumble from thorn bush to thorn bush. 
my mother and father who hate each other, Rachel who hates me, a school that gags on me like a hair like I'm a hairball, and Heather. I just need to hang on long enough for my new skin to graft. Mr. Freeman thinks I need to find my my feelings. How can I not find them? They are chewing me alive like an infestation of thoughts, shame, mistakes. I squeeze my eyes shut. Jeans, fi jeans that fit. That's a good start. I have to stay away from the closet to go to all of my to co to go to all my classes. I will make myself normal. Forget the rest of it. We have finished the plant unit in biology. Miss Kane drops ten pound ten pound hints at the that the test will focus on seeds. I study how seeds get planted. This is actually cool. Some plants spit their spit their seeds into the wind. Others make make seeds yummy enough for birds to eat, so they get pooped out on passing car cars. Plants make plants make way more seeds than they need because they know what that life is not perfect and all seeds don't won't make it. Kind of smart when you think about it. People used to do that to have twelve or fifteen kids because they figured some would die, some would turn out rotten, and a couple would be hard working, honest farmers. Who knew how to plant seeds? What seeds need to germinate? Seeds are inefficient. If the seed is planted too deep, it doesn't warm up at the right time. Plant, plant it to close the surface and a crow eats it. Too much rain and the seed molds. Not enough rain and it never gets started. Even if it managed to sprout, it can be choked by choked by weeds, rooted up by a dog, smashed by a soccer ball, or as as asphyxiated by car exhaust. It's amazing anything survives. How plants grow, quick quickly. Most plants grow fast and die young. People get 70 years. A bean plant gets four months, maybe five. Once the itty bitty baby plant geeks, peeks out of peeks out of the peeks out of the ground, it it sprout it sprouts leave, so it can observe absorb, absorb more sun. Then it sleeps, eats, and sunbathes until it's ready to flower a teenage plant this is a bad time to be a rose or as in a zinnia or a marigold because people attack with scissors and cut off what's pretty but plants are cool if the rose is if the rose is picked the plant grows another one it needs to bloom to produce more to produce more seeds I'm going to ace this test. My cafeteria has changed since I have no friends in the in the known universe. First off, I don't go through the line or anything to avoid vulnerable moment that vulnerable moment of coming out into the lunchroom. That moment when every head's lift and evaluates Friend, enemy, or loser. So I brown bag it. I had to write a note for to my mother asking her to buy lunch bags, bologna, 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 and uh, and little containers of um applesauce. The note made made her happy. She came home from store from the store with all kinds of junk food I could take. Maybe I should, um, 
start talking to them maybe a little bit but that but what if I say something wrong baloney girl that's me Blogna, blogun, blogna girl. That's me. I try to read while eating alone, but the noise gets between my eyes and the page, and I can't see through it. I observe. I pretend I'm a scientist. On, on the outside looking in, the, the way Miss Miss Kane describes her ways, watching rats to get lost in mazes. The Marthas don't look lost. They sit in they sit in formation. A new girl in my old seat, a sophomore who just moved here from Oregon. Her clothes have a dangerously high percentage of polyester. She needs to get that taken care of. They nibble Carrot sticks and olives spread pate onto stone ground that stone ground wheat um, crackers and made bites of goat cheese. Megan, and Emily, and Heather drink cranberry apricot juice. Too bad, too bad I can't buy stock in the juice company. I'm watching the a trend in the making. Are they talking about me? They are certainly laughing enough. I chop my sandwich and it barfs mustard on my sh on my shirt. Maybe they're maybe they're planning the next project. They could mail snowballs to the other deprived children in Texas. They could knit goat hair blankets for sh for Sean's. <laughs> for shorn sheep. I imagine what Heather might look like in se in 10 years after two children and 70, 70 pounds. It helps a little. Rachel, or Rochelle, takes a seat at the end of my table with Hannah, an the exchange student from Egypt. Rachel, or Ro Rochelle, is now experimenting with Islam. She wears a scarf on her head and some brown and red gauzy harem pants. Her eyes are ringed with black eyeliner thick as a, as crayon. I think I see her looking at me, but I'm probably wrong. Hannah wears jeans and a Gap t-shirt. They eat hummus and pita and titter in French. There is a s sprinkling of losers like me like me, is scattered all among the happy teenagers, prunes, and the oatmeal of school. The others have a social power to sit with other losers. I'm the only one sitting alone, under the glowing neon sign which, which reads, Complete and total loser, not quite sane, stay away, do not feed. I go to the restroom to turn my shirt around so the mustard Stain is hidden under my hair. We had eight inches of snow last night. In any part of the country, that would mean a snow day. Not in Syracuse. We get snow. We never get snow days. It snows an inch in South Car Carolina. Everything shuts down, and they get on the six o'clock news. In our district, they plow early and and often and put chains on the bus tires. Hair Woman tells us they canceled school for a whole week back in the 70s because of the energy crisis. It was wicked cold and have to and would have cost too much to heat the school. She looks wistful. Wistful. One point vocab word. She blows her nose loudly and pops another smelly green cough drop. The wind blasts a snow drift against the snow. Our teachers need a, sh a snow day. They look unusually pale. 
The men are shaving carefully and the women never remove their boots. They suffer some sort of teacher flu. Their, no their noses drip, their throats gum up, their eyes are, are rimmed with red. They come to school long enough to infect the staff room, then go home sick when the, when the sub when this sub shows up. Open your book. Open your books now. Open your books now. Who can tell me what snow symbolized in Hawthorne? Groan. Hawthorne wanted snow to symbolize cold. That's what I think. Cold and silence. Nothing quieter than snow. The sky screams to deliver it. A thousand... A hundred banshee, banshees flying on the edge of the lizard. No, but once a snow, the snow covers the ground, it hushes as still as my heart. Okay, <laughs> again with the symbolism. Wow, <laughs> interesting things that we see here. Um, yeah. So basically, um. Melinda is doing well in school now, and she, um, and she was gonna go shopping with her mom, and, um, Mr. Freeman gives her, gives Melinda a ride, and he tells her, like, focus on what you're feeling, and... Um, and then Melinda goes to the store that her mom works at, which is Efforts, which is a store that's not doing, going very well. And, um, um Melinda tries on a lot of cl clothes and she has finally found some jeans that fit her. Like, not, it's not just physically, but it actually also made her feel good. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, when you go shopping, it's like, you don't, when you buy something and, and it's like, you don't just buy something that fits, it, you just buy something that makes you feel good, like... Yeah. And, um, anyways, um, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I could remember from this chapter. <laughs> um, so my discussion question for today is, um, is there ever a teacher that you could ever reach out to? Because back back in high school, I kind of wished, like, or like, teachers that you wished that you um, reached out to. Because in high school, I, I really wished that I reached out to my English teacher more. Because she is understanding and she um is open to what her students tell her and and she always listens like yeah that's why I love her so much um but don't you don't have to name your a specific tape teacher. It can be like an English teacher or a math teacher or a, um, or an art teacher or a tech teacher. Or Sorry, my camera just shot up, shut off. Um, but yeah, um, anyone that you talk to or you wish that you talk to, just let me know in the comments below and let's get this, this, the discussion going, you guys. That's why I started this series, so that we can get discussions about the book and 
that I can interact with you guys. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this series, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Remember to stay happy, stay safe, and stay cool. And I am off to the moon, and I will be back soon.